one more. After the pepper, I'm going to go crazy more for you as well.
if it weren't for your parents, you wouldn't be able to do those floats without all that parent supervision. So thanks to your parents for helping you to build yeah. those floats. And of course, for the first time ever, a pep rally where you are rocking with the doctor. Now last year, we came out and uh, we did a little We Will Rock You. And it was kind of fun. And this time, since I happen to know that your very own Johnny Cohen here can rock that guitar solo, this time we have a band. But you know how this one goes. Here?
and Terrence for candy contest and baby picture winners. Woo! At least that's what it says on my sheet. There they are. Freshman. 
know some of you want to take some more pictures, right? So I hope they're out there because I'm just going to start reading names. Melanie Anderson, daughter of Larry and Peggy Anderson, escorted by Ryan Larson, son of David and Roanne Larson. <laughs> Shayla Baird, daughter of Rhonda Baird and David Baird, escorted by Dirk Cool, son of Mark Cool and Joan Cool. Samantha Griner, daughter of Mark and Karen Griner, escorted by Chad Davis, son of Chris and Deb Davis. Her fan club. Taryn Pesha, daughter of David and Kirsten Pesha, escorted by Woody Orn, son of Victor and Shane Orn and Kent Lee Sloan. Marissa Simplot, daughter of John and Cheryl Simplot, escorted by Scott Gleason, son of Marty and Julie Gleason. And Fairfield's 2006 homecoming queen, Amy Rauscher, daughter of picture taking. Slide off to the side a little bit. Go over and pose for these people over here. I'm going to call up to the stage an honorary faculty homecoming queen in court. Yes, it's true. We're doing something new. We've done, never done this before. Mrs. Myers, Mr. Rep, Mr. Hosbond, and Mr. Rose. Has a tornado taken her away? There she is. Our honorary faculty homecoming queen, queen and her court. Mrs. Myers has always wanted to be homecoming queen. And this is her year, but we have to mention each member of her court. Gullis the Lion. Heartless the Tin Man, and Brainless the Scarecrow. Now, now let me amend that a little bit. We'll start with Mr. Rose, the Cowardly Lion. Cowardly by no means. In the film, you know that the, the lion is probably the most lovable character. And I think we've got that in Mr. Rose here, especially holding a baby. Even though the lion looks like he's scared quite a bit, he always stands up for his friends. Mr. Rose is at the forefront of making all of this stuff happen for all of us and not just for the athletes. He's a true activities director and he cares about getting all of this stuff going. And if that's not enough, he helped you get the time out of class today. You better give it up for Mr. Rose! the Tin Man. Some of Mr. Hosbond's freshmen think he's heartless. In education, we call it rigorous. And those high standards are valuable. The Tin Man was always the most emotional, but he also carried a big axe. Don't mess with Mr. Hosbond. He rocks. as brainless doesn't know that he's been here longer than the rest of us up here. He's taught, he's coached, he's given the pep talk, and he still looks good enough to get some of you to vote for him for homecoming queen. Mrs. 
Myers, our, our very own Dorothy Gale. She was supposed to have a little tiara. Where's Teal with the crown? Well, anyway, for her, there's no place like homecoming. And it's only here, somewhere over the rainbow, that this honor could be hers. A big round of applause for her and her court. She has to be going now to catch a tornado and drop a house on the Wicked Witch of Centerville. Okay, you're stuck with me now. <laughs> so I'm supposed to say a few words to fire you up. I think you're fired up already, are you? So if we think about it, how can you not be fired up already? Your football team is 4-1. and one. Your volleyball team, you get this record for games, 41-11. and 11. They are undefeated in the conference. At the Davis County Marching Band Festival, your field commanders were named outstanding. has been invited to perform at the Iowa High School Thespian Festival. The girls' cross-country team just won the Muscatine meet. Jennifer Bradfield and Jessica Delker lead a continually improving girls' swim team, and at this rate, they should qualify several swimmers for state competition. made the national FFA chorus. <laughs> Boys cross country have been conference champs for six years and running. <laughs> Not to mention you have the only homecoming in the state rocking with the doctor. <laughs> So I thought I'd better look into this Wizard of Oz theme. We've got the Scarecrow, we've got the Tin Man, we've got the Lion, we've got Dorothy. So, let me break it down here for you. First, the Scarecrow. Everybody thought he was brainless. But he always had the best ideas for what to do. I like to think of that as sort of like the dumb jock stereotype. <laughs> stereotype, yeah, my voice is going already. Stereotype. The offensive line. Let's talk about our offensive line here for a minute. These are the guys, put your hands up guys, offensive line. All right, these are the guys that don't get noticed unless they break down and allow somebody to sack their quarterback. But when they do their jobs, Dirk, Mike, and Scott get to be the heroes. And doing their jobs is more complicated than you might think. A team that knows the playbook and executes well can often beat a stronger, faster team. Most people don't know that the center calls out the blocking assignments, just like the quarterback calls out the snap count. And that's where we have one of your class co-presidents, Ryan Cochran. The reason for that is that you don't just need a big, strong guy there. You also need a smart guy to call out those assignments and get the right play going. Success starts with the guys on the line knowing how to execute a game plan. Now, the Tin Man. Tin Man represents emotion. If you're going to play football, you've got to play for the love of the game, right? You guys love this game? Kind of thought you did. Tin Man is also made of metal and carries a big axe. Now, if we think of an axe as a weapon or as a tool, Dirk seems to have plenty of those to work with, doesn't he? Got plenty of weapons on this team? Woo. Is the microphone still on? I yeah. asked, does Dirk have enough weapons on this team? Woo. All right. Mike Wiseman and Scott Gleason are both averaging almost 100 rushing yards a game. Now, if you're the defense, 
tickets for the Centerville Flying Monkeys. How do you defense that? You're going to stop this guy, the other guy's going to run. You're going to stop this guy, the other guy's going to run. You're going to try to stop both of them? Dirk will just throw it to Woody. Or any one of those other guys out there because we've got plenty of capable receivers. But the Tin Man was no glory hound. Everything he did was for the good of his friends and the team. So when you think about football, it's essentially a war over turf, right? And who protects his territory better than the mighty king of beasts, the lion? Why, thank you, Diana. The big roar. Let's all do that. is leading this team in tackles. So those flying monkeys of Centerville had better think twice before airing it out on us. We got five different players that have made interceptions. And tonight we might even have more. What do you think? Lions also travel in groups called Prides. And that's our 12th man the FHS fans. We are proud of this school and all of its accomplishments. All of them. Go for the 12th man. Let's hear you! And so that brings us to Dorothy. Dorothy's purpose throughout her adventure was to get back home. Some people never know how great their home is until they get away from it. And that's the true beauty of homecoming. Celebrates the past, bringing in classes from years gone by, including we have with us today the class of 1951, and we should give a big cheer for them. In fair, uh, <coughs> excuse me, and homecoming also looks to the future with a kind of revelry that you will never want to forget. The school is not that building. It's each and every one of you. And you have to take time to celebrate that. Fairfield rocks because you rock! Now, being an English teacher, I, I have to throw in the educational part here. This is, this is for you, the football team here. Before you take to the field, I've got a line of Shakespearean iambic pentameter for you. I want to see if you guys can do this. Before you take the field, you get together and you say, Cry havoc and let slip the dogs of war! Okay, say it with me now. Cry havoc and let slip the dogs of war. One more time. Cry havoc and let slip the dogs of war! You've got it now! Okay, I was wrong to call the Centerville team the Flying Monkeys. It seems, and I, I, I've been told this, it seems that their name is uh, Big Red. They're essentially named after gum. So at the dance tonight, our players are all going to have fresh breath, baby, because they will have been chewing on Big Red for a couple of hours.
kitchen can still be served. So, if you've got a bus to catch, it's only uh, 10 minutes to 3 right now, so we've got plenty of time. I'm turning it back over to Dr. Hypnocracy. Happy, happy homecoming. This is another Dr. Hypnocracy original called Ravishing. Just 